but I believe we need to be honest about the state of the church. And I believe it's too late to just tweak a couple of things and change a little bit here, change a little bit there. It's, it's, it's time for uh, an overhaul. It's time for something to change. Um, I don't believe I'm rebellious. I believe I'm the norm. Um, I believe most people think this way. And that's why, you know, I don't know what it's like here, but in the States, once you turn 18, you're out of the church. You're done with it. You know, once you're no longer forced to go there, um, you know, all the stats say the kids that grow up, once they turn 18, about 70% of them leave the church. Uh, they're not interested anymore. They didn't see the real thing. Um, I think part of the reason is the way we're doing things doesn't make sense. Those who argue for the existence of hell live least like it exists. And we preach about this death to life experience, like that Ezekiel 36 pile of dry bones that suddenly comes to life. We're talking about we were once dead in our trespasses and sins, but now the Spirit of God actually entered into our bodies where these new creations, and the world looks on and goes, but you're no different. This doesn't make sense. You say you believe in this, and then you don't tell anyone about the existence of this place, and then you say that you've gone from death to life, but I'm looking at your lifestyle, and it's no different, and people are growing up in this, and they're going, I don't, I don't believe it. I don't get it. I, I was talking to a Muslim just, just uh, last week, you know, just, just start a conversation with him and, and, and start sharing, and, and he, at, by the end of it, he goes, okay, you know what? Honestly, I grew up in the church. He goes, but growing up in the church, I realized this can't be it. This can't be it. So that's why I began to search for other things. It's not like I wanted to leave my faith. It's just that, man, I grew up in this. And you hear this all of the time. If you're out sharing your faith, you hear this all of the time. I grew up in the church. I've been there. I've done that. I didn't see anything. And at first you can go, well, what's your problem? What's this? What's this? You're just blinded by the world. And, and yeah, yeah, maybe they are. But, but let me ask you a question. Try to think. Imagine right now, if you were not a Christian, okay? Just try to imagine that right now. You're not a Christian. None of you believe in Jesus, okay? Let's just say there's, there's a room full of atheists right now. Just picture yourself. You don't believe in God. In your head, say it. I don't believe in I mean, don't say it. That's, <laughs> you, you know what I'm saying, okay? Just try. I know it's really hard because some of us have known the Lord so long and we can't imagine not knowing him. But just try to imagine it for a second. Imagine that, okay, I don't know what to believe. I don't know what to believe. And maybe you're searching. And in your mind, you're thinking, you know what? Maybe there is a God. I, I just want to find truth. Are you picturing yourself doing that? I just want to find truth. Where would you go? Would you go to the Christian church? I don't think I would. That's the reputation. I seriously probably would go to Islam first. I go, at least they're willing to die for it. You know? They'll blow themselves up for this belief. What is it? Maybe I'd go to some Eastern teaching where there just seems to be like this peace about them and a tolerance. But what I really think the Christian church, I mean, when you think the Christian church, you just think hypocrisy. You think, I've been to one of those services before. I, I, I walk in there, maybe some of them are better than others and there's a more entertaining speaker or a better band, but does that really draw you to God? I mean, if you were an unbeliever, what would you want when you walked in a room? What would you want to see? Wouldn't you want to see the man up front, whoever was up front, like where, where he, you just saw, man, that guy talks to God. That guy knows God in a way that I don't. He talks about the way God listens to his prayers. He doesn't listen to me like that. I want what that guy has. You don't care if he's got this slick presentation. You don't care if there's a cool little dance team or a great little drama at first. Anyone can do that. You're searching for God, and you're going, man, does that person have that? 
Does he really believe it? You look around in the group. Man, see, this is why people are leaving the church. They read the scriptures and they look at that early church and they go, man, no one claimed that any of his stuff was his own. There was this love amongst this group of people. There was this tremendous love. That was Jesus' prayer, right? God, make them one in John 17. Why? So that the world would believe that you sent me. Would you really go to the Christian church because of its unity? You would just go, man, they can't even get along with each other. They just come up with a new denomination every week. And ever else, how many of these churches are splitting and fighting about this and that? Is that really what would attract you? Is that where you would go? I'm just saying, I, I wouldn't do it. And I don't think I'm just odd. I really believe I'm the norm. And this is why people are leaving the church in droves. And good news is I believe that this could change. And I believe in what Jesus says, that he was going to build his church and the gates of hell wouldn't stand against it. And the good news is this it does happen in other parts of the world. You know, I mean, I, I, we left America for a little bit and I went to Asia because I thought, man, I've always heard about the underground church in China. I want to see it. And I was blown away. And I go, wow, that looks just like what I read about. It finally makes sense. Then I went to India and I spoke at a conference for the persecuted church, people who had lost their lives, or no, they had not lost their lives, their, their relatives, they watched their relatives die, people that were missing limbs, people with scars on their body, beaten for their faith. And I'm, I, I was so blown away that I asked the leader, because after a, a week there, I'm going, it seems like everyone's serious about God here. Where are the casual ones? There's got to be. And he, he says, well, actually, there aren't. He goes, that doesn't make sense in this region. Why would you casually become a Christian? You lose everything. You lose your job, you lose your home, you get ostracized from your village. Look at all these people. They had to flee into the, the jungles for their lives. Why would you casually do that? I thought, wow. Now, when I was at the underground church in China, okay, they, they, they said it's a little dangerous. You know, this one, this is where they're training some of the missionaries. And so I didn't take my whole family. I just took my oldest daughter because she's the most expendable. And uh, <laughs> so we go and, um, you know, firstborn. And, and so we go and, man, I wish I, wish I could transport you there. I wish you could have just walked into this environment and listened to the way they prayed. Listen to the way they sought after God. Listen to their testimonies. They start talking about different times when the police came after them because they were, you know, gunshot. And they're just talking about, not in this solemn way, but with joy. Like, man, it was awesome. They were firing us and we're running, you know. And, and, and I'm just wanting to hear more and more and more. And they finally asked me, of course, and they're like, why are you so interested in this? And I said, because this is not the way it is in America. And they're like, really? I go, in America, we have these buildings called churches. And, and we actually just attend there for like an hour, hour and a half a week. And, and we switch. Like if there's a better speaker at a different one, we'll go to that one. And if there's better music at another one, we'll go to that one. If we get in a fight with someone, we'll switch to this one. If the child care is better. And these people just start laughing. Not like giggling, but like hysterically. And I wasn't trying to be funny. I was just explaining why it was so intriguing to me. I go, this is... But they were literally laughing to the where... My, my daughter, when we left, she was, uh, I don't know, what, 16 or so, 14. Um, she says to me, Dad, that was weird. I go, I know. She goes, did you see the way they were laughing and you weren't even being funny? I go, exactly. But they thought it was comical because they're going, how did you get that from this? How, how did you get there? And you start realizing that the majority of the world, well, you know, for me in the States, going, man, they're actually, they actually find what I call or we call their Christianity laughable because the lack of congruency from this book, because we keep changing things. 
Oh, you don't want to share your faith? You know, dress up like Santa. Sing a song. Can you do a solo? Are you not, you're not scared of that? Do that. In fact, let me cater to you. What kind of church would you like? How long do you want the services to be? Okay, you want, you, want, you want support groups where everyone's exactly like you? Okay, so anyone in their 30s that enjoys mountain bike riding, we'll do a group for you. Is, is that cool? Now will you come? Hey, what about if, if we don't, we'll just, that's not really sin. We'll let, we'll let more of the sins go. Come on, divorce, this is not that big a deal. Let's just keep making it easier and easier so we get the customers in the door. And people around the world are going, what are you guys even doing over there? And I just realized, you know what? I, I can't go down this road anymore. This is stuff that I've thought ever since I was a kid. I remember when I first started reading this book, and I would look around the church I was a part of and think, is everyone okay with this? Because I see something different in this book. But everyone seemed to be okay, so I'm like, well, maybe I'm off. Maybe I'm the weird one. But it never let me go. And then when I remember when I turned 40, like seven years ago, I just thought, you know what? I'm just going to say it. Uh, why, why am I holding this back? I'm 40. I'm practically dead. Let's just, you know, you, know, you just think, man, how long are you going to live? And so I just go, I'm going to stand before God. I just got to say everything that's on my heart. And I start laying out. I go, have you guys ever wondered if we're just missing it? And you saw, I, I, was, I was in front of like 30,000 college students, and they're all like, and I go, I knew it. I knew I wasn't the only one. You read this book and you see something different about Christianity, something different about church. And they're like, and sometimes you just wonder, or have we become like the church in Laodicea where it's this lukewarm thing that God's just gonna spit out of his mouth? And, you, uh, and now I'm just at a point where I'm going, I, I can't do it anymore. I can't do it anymore. I, ever since I first started reading that book, I knew my responsibility to go out and love people to the point where I would weep for them and lay out the gospel and be rejected for it. Um, I just want to be a part of a body. I don't care how big it is, but where the people are the real thing and they'll actually give the shirt off their back for me. And I know when I turn around, they're not talking behind my back grading my sermon but they love me and they don't actually care about the stuff on this earth because they really believe in this treasure in heaven they're not going to question existence when difficult things happen because they just realize you know what anyone who desires to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted I just felt like the church became like a bunch of soldiers that, that were running into battle and then running back to the general going, oh, they're shooting at me. <laughs> it's like, what did you expect? This is a war. This wasn't going to be comfortable. This is a fight, and I believe that this is what the Lord is calling the church back to. But it starts with us. It starts with us saying, you know what? I want that. I got to have that. Um, the difficult thing is that you start talking that way and thinking that way and trying to build your church that way. It's not necessarily the best church growth strategy. And they'll start going to the church down the road that says, man, just come and sit down and we'll take care of everything. We'll disciple your kids for you. We'll win your friends to the Lord. You, I don't want you to have to lift a finger. And yet I just look in Scripture and go, that was never Christ's intention for the church. And, but I'm hopeful because I see a younger generation rising up and most of them are leaving the church, but there's another pocket of them that are saying, no, I'm, we're gonna go after the real thing. We're going after the real thing. The other thing that's really encouraging because I see heads nodding was for a while it was just the youth, but lately there's this different trend, which I love. There are these 50-somethings that have gone through the whole entertainment church system and they found it lacking and they're going, I want something else. And they even tell me, Francis, why do you just speak to college students? We need this too. We want this too. We're not satisfied with it either. Maybe we were for a little while. We thought, wow, that's cool. We can entertain at church. But now we want God back. Like we, we, want it, we want the 100% real thing where we're in awe experiencing him. 
and not just a good service. And there's more and more of that happening. It gets me excited about this shift that's happening that we're getting forced into. I don't know about you, but I, I, I just, I dream of walking into a gathering one day where there's tremendous love like I never witnessed before. See, I had thousands of people coming to a gathering to hear me speak, but they did not love each other. And when I started my church, I didn't really care. I didn't, I, I didn't think about that. I just wanted to fill up the room. I just wanted to preach the gospel. I just wanted to lay it out. And, and so you never thought about them needing to love one another, yet that is our apologetic. That was supposed to be what convinced the world. Let me three minutes. Okay. And then we'll take a break because I know I've gone long, but I'm, I just want to get to, I actually have notes. Um, <laughs> I usually just kind of ramble, but every once in a while I go, okay, this is good. But I just, I want to walk into a gathering where the guy who's praying up front actually looked like he was praying to someone. Rather than just closing our eyes and going, oh, Lord, thank you for this day. What a, what a great group of guys. You know, you're talking to a holy God. What an honor to come into his presence. Man, what if someone searching walked in? Don't you just want to see, you know, wouldn't you want to see someone that's just connected to him? Can our churches get there where we're loving each other? where the person up front is actually praying to someone, talking like he's speaking to a holy God, where the, where the leader was not just a great speaker, but he was someone that knew Jesus deeply and, and would cause others to envy that, where, where the people actually hungered for holiness, confessing and repenting, not, not just trying to relieve guilt or see how much guilt they can, how much sin they can get away with and still go to heaven, but where the people longed for holiness where, where the people actually were on a mission to share the gospel and believe that they wanted to get this message to the ends of the earth. Everyone felt that, and they had a compassion for the poor like Jesus spoke about, where people were clearly alone with God during the week, where you walk into a gathering, you knew everyone in there had some serious time alone with God this week, and now they're coming together to celebrate, where people believed they received gifts from the Spirit that enabled them to build the other people up, that they were given spiritual manifestations for the common good, and they walked in going, man, who can I serve today? Who can I build up today? Man, I'd love to be a part of that. I'd love to be a part of a church where there's just some sign of something supernatural going on. And a statement I heard not too long ago was someone just said, you know, that's the problem in today's church. It's neither super nor natural. Um, it's, it's, uh, I don't see anything unusual in it. And the parts that, that, and so much is just forced and timed and manipulated. And, and where, where is this sense of awe of, I just gathered with a craziest group of people that are filled with something that I have never seen before. I believe it can happen. And that's what I'm pursuing. And the great thing is I, I believe I'm finally starting to experience that and have peace, and have peace, and go, gosh, this feels like scripture.